Hey friends, are you unsure of what to say on social media or what to even send in your weekly emails? Well, what if creating content could be easy? Would you be looking for a shortcut to creating consistent content? Yes, consistent content, because you know consistency is key. Well, let me tell you, you are not alone when you feel like you're struggling on what to post or what to write in emails. And we know that you have that product part of your business down. But as you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know that to get more people to your products, to buy your products, you need to create great content. Oh, I know. I see. I keep saying content, and that's the dreaded C word. And we can't tell you how many product bosses tell us that they want to create great content for their audience and their customers, but they don't know what to say, or they are so busy, they can't find the time, or they really, really, really don't want to be the face of their brand. Well, no worries, because that's exactly why we created a year of content. It is your shortcut to creating consistent content that resonates with your audience and brings more loyal customers who can't wait to buy your products. If you want to see how easy this is and how easy it is to create content for your audience and your customers, head to www.ayearofcontent.com. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo Sitap, an Amazon guru that has built a multi six figure product based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my baby New Year co-host, Mina kumo <laughs> Okay. Hello. Is that, Hi, is that a baby New Year? I don't... I've never heard that in my life, but... Did I just make I it up? <laughs> yeah. But I don't, you know, dislike it. <laughs> new Year, new you? <laughs> baby New Year? Okay, okay. I'm going to Google this. I won't chat in. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, Jacqueline. Welcome to 2022. Can you believe we made it? We made it. It's been... There's something real. It's called... It's true. I oh, it wasn't is? making it up. Oh, baby. Baby Why New is it Year. called that? This is from this is from Wikipedia. Okay. It's a personification of the start of the new year, commonly seen in editorial cartoons. He symbolizes the birth of the next year and oh. the passing of the prior year. In other words, rebirth. I should have just said my rebirth co-host. <laughs> Oh, because that would have made more sense to me. (laughs) Kind (laughs) of. Okay. 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 At least I didn't make it all the way up. (laughs) (laughs) Now everybody's going to start saying it. (laughs) All right. So kicking off the year, um, you know, and I'm I'm glad we're laughing because, you know, it has been... (sighs) I know. It's been a few years. (laughs) You know how like people are like, (laughs) it's been been a year. year. It's been a few years. (laughs) It's been like a decade. Yeah. And, you know, this was something that we had our um, meeting with our masterminders right before the holiday, right before Christmas. And I said, you know, I feel right now very overwhelmed, but I feel really excited too. There's something that happens very magically at the end of every single year. I know I'm not going to jinx any of us because of me talking about 2020 being, you know, this is going to be the grand old year, but it was, it was very significant in different ways. We did a lot of growth. We did, we done did that as growth. Hu- human beings yes. as a whole. We sure did. A did. Lot of growth. It just said it was like a global awakening and it really was even on a very personal level, you know. But let's move on. I mean, this is 2022. Like, yeah, it's 2022. We're so far past that year. <laughs> 2020. What? Who? Um, so 2022 and I feel like it is very um very magical still. You know, every new year there is this surge of energy that comes into the world. And I think that we all have to be really cognizant of it, that we can harness the energy in whatever way we want to. We can bring forth this beautiful energy of all these exciting things, or we can be like, oh, don't want to. I'm so exhausted, you know? So, well, kind of like the definition of baby new year. Yeah. <laughs> The rebirth, the the rebirth, right? The, the end of one year and moving into the other. And now listen, we know it's candle calendar dates, but 
all it takes is our mind, right? Yeah. Like it's our mind to wrap around it. It's that motivation that kicks in in the beginning of the year. Um, we all want to eat a little better. We all want to move our bodies a little better. We want to be better at certain things like parenting or um, uh-huh. I don't know, learning something new, better at business. And so there's just a lot of different things that we're like, okay, this is the year. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. And we all get to into those thoughts at the beginning of the year, but I will tell you that Jacqueline and I have pushed everything back a little bit in our calendar at the product boss to give ourselves room for a little bit of a headspace because we all deserve it along with all of you too. Right. And you know what? I didn't say this earlier, but I'm really going by the Lunar New, New Year now. <laughs> okay, so so what you're saying is we have till February 21st yes. or sometime around then. No, no, it's earlier than that. <laughs> okay. <you know. laughs> I wonder if our I wonder if Bessler Secrets Challenge aligns with that. You should Google. Oh that my while. gosh, I should. It's Year of the Tiger. I know that for sure because my oldest We're just daughter going is by the Lunar New Year now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, the United States is the only one that goes by, you know, this one. Um, okay, by the regular. It's February 1st. So. Okay, all right. We're right around there. Okay, so yeah. happy new year in a month, my friends. We're going <laughs> to do this again. And this is just like the little bit of white space that you all needed because we're going to get into really um, kicking this year off to be the best year yet for real. And we want to give a little bit of white space and thinking space for before we jump right in. Yeah. And so what Mina is talking about is, is we are kicking off, you know, this year is, um, this week, it's the first week of January. I know we haven't moved fast enough, Mina, but actually <laughs> the second week of January, you are all, if you're on our email list or you listen to the podcast, um, follow us on Instagram and our Facebook communities, we are going to kick off, um, the product bosses guide to your best year yet. It's going to be a series of three free workshops that we're going to be doing starting the week of the 18th. So week of January 18th, um, because we're going by the lunar calendar. (laughs) No, we aren't really, but it really is super fun. We did this back in September where we did the three workshops and it was fantastic. It gave people a chance to like get their notebooks and their pencils out and their pens and sit down and learn and really, um, comprehend it, you know, like, you know how you can read speed read and it's not for comprehension. I felt it was the same vibe when we did the workshops in the fall to get everybody ready for the, for the holiday season. Well, same goes for this new year. It's a little bit of let's, you know, get dip our toe in, get moving on our brains. And it's really, you know, one step forward at a time. Yeah. And we're going to align and realign, right? We're going to talk about how to scale your business, how how to deal with time management. We're going to talk about, um, what's the other one we're going to talk about? (laughs) Um, 80, 20 rules. So it's really uh, focusing. So it's time, scale, and focus. And I know that some of you did uh, thousands, tens of thousands of you took this in the fall time. You should take it again. Because Jacqueline said, just like she said, it's about realignment. So even if you do anything you and you redo something, the magic comes in that reiteration of it because you learn, you pick up different things. Your business is in a different place. You personally, your mind is in a different place. And so really, um, and we're teaching it kind of a little bit different too. We are actually. And so it's, but we're in the same buckets, time, scale, and focus. And you have data, right? You have data now going off of 2021 on how the holidays went for you, you know, how Q4 went for you, how, just how it all rounded out. So your homework before you register or go ahead and register anyways, but here's your homework before our first workshop is do a little bit of an audit, you know, look back at last year, figure out what your revenue was. What were, you know, what were the products that did well? Like how was your team looking? If you have a team, you know, what would you want to improve? What was great? What was a big win? And, um, come ready and ready to learn and ready to align with other product bosses. Um, and then for Valentine's day, we're all going to hang out with you because we're kicking off bestseller secrets. Challenge, yeah. Which also... Gail and male pals. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> all, all. Welcome all <laughs> to the bestseller secrets challenge, which any of you that come to our workshops will automatically get, um, VIP access. Like you'll get instant access to also join us in that challenge. And I mean, tens of thousands of product bosses have gone through this and they go through it every year. And things change, right? Data changes, uh, bestsellers change. We're going to help you figure out what to do with those bestsellers and, you know, how you can scale. And this year can be a fantastic year without you doing more and doing all the things and, um, really feeling like you're always behind the ball instead of taking action and being ahead of it. So this episode though, 
it's about how to step into the role of your business this mm-hmm. year. And this one's a little bit about, it's a little more mindset than strategy. Um, because what we know, what we've seen is that so many times, um, business owners are the ones that get in their own way. Yeah. Right. Your mindset, your thoughts are the things that will step in and get in the way of your growth or your goals or the things that you want to happen. Yeah. I intentionally brought up the, the challenge, the workshops, everything beforehand, because I do think that when people, there's the people that do and the people that don't do, I mean, realistically, that is true. There's, you all are, did something amazing. You did something really special. You created a business and you would not believe the amount of people, 98% of the people out there talk about it all the time, but they don't do it right? Mm -hmm. So all of you have done it. So when you're stepping into the role of your business, these are the thoughts that go through a boss of a business, right? How can I, you know, get ahead? How can I, uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to um, teach myself? All those different things. So I wanted to make sure you all knew that you were invited because we know that you are the ones that really will take the actions. Right. So Here's how we believe that each and every one of you out there, it's not about revenue. It's not about the product you're selling. You know, Mm -hmm. like maybe even you just have an idea right now, or maybe you're working full time at a job and right now you're making things or manufacturing things as, as a side hustle. Um, maybe you're a full-time parent and you do things while your kids are sleeping or napping. Maybe you have left your job and this is your full-time, right? You're a full-time product boss. Um, there's so many different ways that you could be functioning in the world right now, but the thing, And this is at all levels of business, right? The Mm -hmm. thing to do, the thing that we want you to work on this year, right? To step into this role of boss of your business that will make everything feel so much easier is we want you to work on and build your confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence. It's a word that people get scared of. (laughs) (laughs) They don't have confidence around confidence. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... Confidence, you know, it's one of those things where people a lot of times think, you know, confidence is something for more people more like me, right? Like maybe because I'm extroverted mm-hmm. and and they're like, oh, you know, she sounds like she's got confidence. Mm-hmm. No, not necessarily. You yeah. know, um, being forward and speaking, I mean, there's certain things I am more confident in than others, mm-hmm. but is confidence like, am I a confident person? Not in all situations. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's because people, they kind of interconnect the two. They think showing up and being extroverted means confident, but that's not really the case, right? There's different ways to show up for your business that are not front-facing, for example. There's different, you know, confidence means a lot of different things, but, you know, we should Google actually what it means. Okay, I'll I'll Wikipedia this one. (laughs) Yeah, let's get it. Baby New Year confidence. Um, (laughs) And so confident looks different to different people. And this is what I've known about creating a team, about building businesses, you know, multi-million dollar businesses, is that people are wired differently. They also show their confidence in different ways because they're wired differently. So while that might look, you know, but, you know, as a whole, a society might think that, you know, oh, confident me, confidence means that you're showing up and talking in front of millions of people or you're really out there and extroverted. And that just really is not the case. You know, um, did you find it, Jacqueline? Yeah. And you know, what's cool is when you type this in, Google has a new thing. This is good for us. So confidence. And then all of a sudden on the right, it says confidence podcasts. Oh, wow. And books on confidence. Oh, nice. Fellow podcasters, we've made it uh-huh. into Google. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were there. Now they're restructuring. <laughs> I wonder if I write in product of like, we'll show up as podcasts for it. Okay. So um, confidence. Here is the definition from Oxford Dictionary. The feeling of belief that one can rely on someone or something, a firm trust. And so example is we had every confidence in the staff. And similar to this would be having a trust, a belief, faith, credence, conviction, reliance, and dependence. Now, another definition of confidence is the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. So example is, it's not possible to say with confidence how much of the increase in sea levels is due to melting glaciers. (laughs) 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 Okay. So it's like, like, this is the last one. Let me do this last one. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I should have pre-read that one. (laughs) Um, A feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. So I'm going to just say that again. Ooh, I like it. This is the one. This is the nail on the head. (laughs) 
<laughs> a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. So this is similar to self-assurance, self-confidence, and self-reliance. Okay, so I'm going to shorten that up to sh- self-assurance of one's own abilities. A self-assurance of one's own abilities. Okay. So you have a conviction to yourself. You believe in yourself. You trust yourself and your own abilities. That's what confidence is. Right. And so that's what we see as a big fear for a lot of people is that they don't feel, they don't believe in themselves enough, or they don't, we hear things like, I'm just not good at business, or I don't know if this will work for me, or, um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to, um, if I'm the one that should, or I'm just not good at this, you know? So there's kind of an uncertainty in your own ability. There's a self-doubt that happens, right? And so I think that confidence is really about being self-assured enough to take a step forward. And that's how you do it. Sometimes people show up and they're like grand and a bit extra, but you that's not synonymous with confidence at all. Yeah. And I think by the definitions that I read, there's different ones. And what we're talking about is confidence in yourself and your abilities. Right. And so a lot of times we'll hear people say, you know, um, they might say something like I'm, I can't keep up and work all the time. Right. Or I want to be able to spend time with my family. So growing my business will take me away from my family. Um, I'm not sure I can be successful. I'm going to be burnt out if this thing grows. Right. I don't know how to be a boss. I don't want to hire people. So much of this goes back to confidence. And I'm going to say it's confidence in the ability to figure out, figure this out for your own life. So you can still grow a business and it can, you can still keep up with your business. It just might look different. Like you will have, you should have confidence in the choices that you make that will help you keep up with your business. Or if you're afraid that you're not going to be successful, have confidence that if you learn, invest in yourself, do the work that you will become successful. Or if you're afraid that you're not going to be able to spend time with your family, right? If my business grows, I won't be able to spend time with my family. Have confidence that if your business grows, you'll be able to hire team members that help you. So you do have more time with your family. You may even be able to, you know, hire help at home so that you have more time with your family. So have confidence that you have the tools and you will figure it out as you go, that you'll make the right decisions for yourself when you get to that level. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but it's I willing to had... try. I just had a, this, this episode is so cerebral. I just had a lightning okay. bolt to my brain. Ooh, tell me, <laughs> tell me baby New Year. Confidence does not mean that you won't be making mistakes along the way. Confidence mm-hmm. does not mean that you won't be failing along the way. It means that you're making decisions and moving forward with a self-assurance that you are doing you know, what's right for you because you believe in your own abilities. And you'll work it out as you figure it out, right? Like we've, Mm -hmm. we've we've talked about our kids before. So I'm sure you've heard it. You may have said it. I I know younger people in our lives that we know and they're like, oh, I don't want to have kids right now. I, you know, they don't feel like they're ready for kids. And we're always like, when people have kids, you're like, you're never ready for kids, right? Uh So confidence in the fact that if, and when you have kids, you will be ready you will move forward with it, right? And when you have a two-year-old, you'll figure out how to manage a two-year-old. And when you have a six-year-old, you'll figure out a six-year-old. When you have a 16-year-old, right? It's confidence that you will learn what you need to learn and do what you need to do when the time arises. Right now, you don't you don't need to know it. You don't have it. You just have to take action, right? You just need to move forward in action. Mm-hmm. I love that. Question for you, product boss. How much time, effort, and money do you spend promoting your business each year? Do you feel like it's paying off? Are you getting tons of visibility? Or do you feel like you're struggling to get more eyes on your products? This is exactly why we created the Small Business Shopping Directory. The Small Business Shopping Directory is an all-in-one place for customers to shop, discover, and support small product businesses every day. It's a place for you to be visible to new customers and get discovered. The Small Business Shopping Directory is the number one small product-based business directory that gets your business in front of thousands of customers who want to support and buy from small businesses just like yours. It's a perfect way to get your products in front of eager buyers this season without having to spend thousands on ads. 
Our goal is to get you more visibility and to get more eyes on your business. And here's the best part. We're doing this together. The directory is a way for small businesses like yours to join forces and create a big impact because customers can finally find you online and offline. They can support you with their purchasing power. It will take all of us to create this movement of supporting small and we can do it together. So are you in? We invite you to join the small business shopping directory. This is your personal invitation to get listed today. You can get up and running in just minutes. So don't wait. You can join now and get your listing by heading to shop one in five.com and click on the link to get listed. Well, I was going to say, so what we want you to do, if we're going to talk about this year and what we'd like you to do is have confidence to step forward and take action. And when we talk about this, we want you to think about this and think, how can I make some bold moves? Because that confidence comes with what you decide to do. We want you to be willing to make those bold decisions. And we want you to be confident in your decisions, right? Because Mm -hmm. if you're confident, okay, I'm going to make this decision. It feels risky. I'm taking a risk here. But the other side of this is, can you be okay with failing? Because failing is your success, right? Which actually, this is an Einstein quote. Failure is success in progress. That's from Albert Einstein. Yeah. And he knows a lot of things, let me tell you. I mean, enough. He knows enough. (laughs) And great hair. And we Um, have no idea because remember, we're not very good at math over here. (laughs) So, you know, when you take action, it goes hand in hand, right? Clarity and confidence comes from action. But the thing that sometimes stops people is the fact that they're so uncertain about what they should do. So they don't move forward, but you can't, it's like chicken and the egg problem here, you know? And I had posted on our Instagram, if you follow us at the product boss, make sure you do right now at the product boss. Um, I put up a quote that said, um, no rain, no flowers. Because the thing is you won't get, you won't get flowers. Flowers won't bloom without the rain. And people are like, but I don't like the rain, right? Same with success. You don't get growth in your business without the failures, it is needed. It's part of the process, like, you know, Albert Einstein said. So I think you have to really reframe it for yourself because confidence, lack of confidence is just uncertainty. You know, according to the definition, it's just this lack of self-assurance in yourself. But how can you start to build that for yourself, right? Build your belief systems. And it's hard to mentally just start believing something. Well, how do you do it? You just move, you just take actions. So I know that sounds scary, but that's what a lot of entrepreneurs do. They simply just take action without knowing everything. And then their confidence starts to build. Even if they failed in a certain way, quote unquote failed, they're still learning. They're that much closer to the certainty that they're aligned with what they wanted in their life. Right? So they get that self-assurance that is a process, the confidence that is a process through failures, through successes, through action. And that's how you build confidence is you just move forward imperfectly. Yeah. So I think what we'd love for you to do is have this, you know, be okay with failing, take those risks and be okay with failing. If you think about children, if you think about babies, when they learn to walk, I read this in Mel Robbins, if I've the high five habit. So she started talking about babies and when babies learn to walk, they're not, their brains haven't taken over yet where they've got self-doubt, right? Um, I don't even know if they have confidence. It's just innate in them that they're like, okay, it's time to walk. They start to walk. They mm-hmm. fall down. They get back up. It's not like a baby falls down the first time they try to walk and they never get back up. They're not critical they to themselves. That's why, Yeah, you know, they don't have those thoughts in their heads telling them you're not good enough to walk, baby. But this yeah. is a baby episode, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Um, So, you know, it really is that, you know, like we're going back to self-assurance of your own abilities, right? So there's some people that have more confidence than others. So there's some babies that learn to walk faster than others. You better believe my sister walked when she was six months, according to my parents. She's clearly the favorite child. And I walked when I was 18 months. But again, I will say this again, small feet, big head, you know, I mean, do them, do the proportions there. It ain't going to happen, you know? So it's not a confidence thing. It's literally... You know, (laughs) 
It's literally as it's a baby. Science. Yes, <laughs> science. As a baby, you're not critical. In in my mind, now as an adult, I'm probably like, okay, you know, 18 months, that seems really slow. You're but- like 18 month old Mina, like, come on, step up. <laughs> But me at 18 months, I wasn't thinking, oh man, I'm really slow at this. I'm just thinking, you know, there was no sort of self-criticism or self-doubt or anything. I just did it when I was ready. And when I, um, and I just kept attempting it, you know, there wasn't like a stopping myself because I know that I'll never walk, for example. Right. And your parents, it creeped into their minds, right? And other Mm -hmm. people start to say stuff. Oh, she's not walking yet. Like, have you taken her to the doctor? And listen, Mm -hmm. even those of us that have, you know, there there are people with disabilities. Taking her to the doctor. (laughs) I mean, I'm telling you now, like people would be like, oh, you know, like, are they, you know, have you (laughs) tested them? There's there's people with disabilities. Like my kids were learning about like Helen Keller, right? And Mm -hmm. she, she was blind and deaf. Mm Mm-hmm. And she had the confidence to step forward into her world and, and and take action, right? So, but we want you all to come to this to be like, here's another quote. I live where Edison had his lab. So Thomas Edison is like a big thing where I am. And his quote is, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So if Thomas Edison stopped on his first try, we'd all be sitting in the dark. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. Tesla would have won, but you know, mm-hmm. like we, <laughs> but think about that. Okay. <laughs> if we I think have full about- confidence somebody else would have discovered <laughs> electricity. <laughs> so but we want you to think about that, right? Like if, if the people that made the big, bold moves mm-hmm. that had confidence to take action and step forward and try and try and try again, if they had stopped on that first try, if they were too afraid to even start, yeah. If they didn't have the confidence to start, take action and move forward. I I, I don't Yeah, I don't or if they listen to people, like just imagine like if parents listen to other people's perceptions of, hey, you, you know, your kid isn't on track or whatever. Or, you know, if somebody told Thomas Edison, I mean, you know, you the light bulb? So, what are you nuts? Yeah, like <laughs> what are you crazy? You know, but he kept going forward. And I know these feel really, really big. So let's take it back a little bit to you, all of you that are listening, because you know, in your mind you might be thinking, Yeah, but I'm not Thomas Edison, I'm not Albert Einstein. But the thing is, you're your own version of that. You are different than the rest of the population. You're an entrepreneur that started something that created a product out of nothing and had it exchanged for money. So you are in your own version of this, you know, in your own arena, able to step into bold moves, however that looks. And I'm going to creep into all your minds right now when you're like, oh, but I just make candles or, but I just make jewelry or, but you know, or there's a thousand other people making what I make. That's okay. Like if you've been around here long enough, you've heard us interview multiple brands. I mean, we work with thousands of product bosses and even within our own masterminds or our students in multi-stream machine, there are highly successful people making similar products in the same product category. And there's room at the top for all of them. They all have access to customers. Like we can't, none of us can possibly sell to every single person in the world. We don't want to, we don't need to. Yeah, right. We don't and need to. We don't, you, none of you need to. You just need, you know, at first a handful of customers. The next, maybe a hundred customers, right? The next, maybe a hundred customers per month. And you keep growing from there and you decide where you want to go with it. And there's going to be, you know, return customers and things like that. But I, but I want you all to, I, I want you all to take that self doubt out and be like, well, what I'm doing isn't special enough or what I'm doing is not different enough. I'm not inventing the light bulb. I'm making earrings. That's okay. It's your version of earrings. It's your Mm -hmm. version of candles. Everybody has a different voice or a different story or a different iteration of how they're bringing that to the world, right? So for all of you that are bringing a candle to the world, then it's your version of the candle, right? It's your type of label. It's your vessel. It's your sense. It's your stories. It's your the way that you look, the way that you talk the way that you, um, if you're funny or not, if you're not funny. I know that seems odd since I'm talking about product, but it's everything around the product. There's customers out there for every single one of us. We all 
resonate with each other in different ways. Just like, believe it or not, there's more than just Jacqueline and I for podcasts. I know you all only listen to our podcast, but believe it or not, there's other podcasters, you know, but we're probably funnier than them. (laughs) You know, you have to get our humor, right? So there's people that probably think that we're too funny or we have too much of humor. Or they don't think we're funny at all. (laughs) Yeah, or that. I mean, right? I feel like very few, very few. Of them. No, yeah. but I mean, you know, we we attract a certain customer base yeah. and we repel certain customer bases and that's okay. So, so my friends, for all of you as we're stepping into this new year together, right? One of the very first things, yes, we can talk to you about the systems in your business. Yes, we can talk to you about how to get more visibility in your business. Yes, we can help you get more sales and we will help you with all of these things throughout the year. But the number one thing that we are going to really press into and say, in order to step into the role as boss of your business this year is to really work and build your confidence. We want you to have confidence to step forward and take action. This is the year. 2022 is the year you make bold moves. 2022 is the year that you make big, bold decisions that are a little bit scary, that feel risky. And 2022 is the year that you may fail. You may fail a lot this year, but if you're failing, it's because you're doing things differently than last year. It's because you're trying something new. You're testing, you're trying, you're, 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 I don't know, you're, um, trying to get a really big influencer to work with you. Oh, they said no, or they didn't respond. Okay, well, let's try again. And let's try again, right? This is the year that you decide that you're going to get on a new sales platform and you're kind of scared because you're not sure. And you're like, not sure if maybe you want to go wholesale or you want to get on Amazon, but you do it anyways. Mm -hmm. And maybe you fail, but you're going to, you fail and then you learn and then you try again and you make it better as you keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And you keep taking the actions right? Just like we said before, what's built into, you know, if we were to like dissect this thing, anatomy of uh, confidence. This is our scientific episode. (laughs) I know science. Okay. We are way better at science than math, maybe. (laughs) Perhaps. I think they're interconnected. Um, Gravity? (laughs) So what's built, the anatomy of confidence would be taking action. It would be failure. So both those things are required. You need to take actions. You need to um, be able to fail. Another thing would be that you would probably have to be really comfortable with getting uncomfortable, Mm. right? No growth happens if you're comfortable, right? So getting That's what James tells me every day. I tell him I don't want to get on the spin bike. (laughs) I'm like, but I like, I do self-care massages. And then like, he's like, no, no, you need to. Yeah, you you had to get uncomfortable, right? And that's what people dislike too, is that, Mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes we don't like to be uncomfortable, which this whole year, quite honestly, has been uncomfortable. You know why? Because Jacqueline and I have been growing so super fast. And I feel like that's with our entire community, right? You grow every time there's discomfort because you're learning about what works what doesn't work. You're really pushing your own boundaries of what you think that you're capable of. And of course that's going to feel uncomfortable, you know? So So let's settle into the discomfort because we know we're growing and we're taking action, right? Yeah. And have confidence in your abilities to learn, right? Go back to baby Jacqueline, baby Mina, baby who, whatever your name is. Baby year. (laughs) Baby you. (laughs) Whatever your name is. Oh my God. Dear you, out listener, <laughs> baby listener, um, and and think if I had if I was a baby and a baby fell down, would I be like, nope, oh, done, you're done, you're out, or would you even like, okay, let's get back up, let's try it again, all right, little baby, take another step, and you keep going through this with that baby, right, and and give yourself the same grace, give yourself the same love, give yourself the same. Um, assurance and what you would hope someone to be like, just get back. Like you're learning to ride a horse. Just get back on the horse. Mm -hmm. Just try it again. Just try it again. We're going to learn and you'll get there. And we're here with you every step of the way. Every week we have two episodes for you. We have our free workshops. We've got our free challenges. We have our courses and our masterminds, and we're doing everything that we possibly can to help move you forward as you step forward and take action. Mm. And here's Mm. the other, I forgot this part. So confidence sometimes means also surrounding yourself with people that inspire you. Mm. So sometimes you can become more confident because you see somebody else do something scary and hard and it inspires you to do the same. 
right? So if you are surrounding yourself with people that potentially are not that way or not that don't like change or really negative or really toxic, it's really, really, really hard to build your confidence in that sort of environment, you know? Because those people aren't willing to change or they aren't willing to take bold moves or they aren't willing to fail in any sort of way because they're stuck on what people would think, you know? So I think be around people that can inspire you to take action. And also, nobody's thinking about you as much as you think about yourself. (laughs) Believe it or not. A (laughs) hundred percent. Okay. So the most critical person, the person who thinks about you the most, the person who's obsessed with you is you. Yeah. Why so, are you so obsessed with you? <laughs> so let's at least be obsessed with the that amazing one. Mariah wonderful- Carey, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I don't I don't think Jacqueline actually knew that I, I was just, singing there. <laughs> I just I just got out of the Mariah Carey Christmas phase of my life. <laughs> but but I don't even know where I was going with that. But here's the thing. If you're going to be obsessed with yourself, if you're going to be obsessed with every single move you make and watch everything you do like a hawk, Do it with a thought that you're an amazing person. You're an Mm -hmm. amazing person that has the abilities to do this, right? You're an amazing person that can get back up and do it again. You're an amazing person that can can say, okay, all right, I tried that. Okay, let me look at that. All right, let me try something else. Or what I've been doing isn't working. Okay, I'm going to have the confidence that I'm going to take this leap, take this jump, you know, invest in myself or a course or get on a new platform or do something. And it's okay, right? Like you always have the ability to make more money. You always have the ability to learn and grow. Like there's there's no end here. So let's just let everybody else's thoughts about you go and make your thoughts about yourself the most important. And then that is having confidence in you and loving you and being and giving yourself grace. Yep. And by definition, having self-assurance in your own abilities, right? We've all met people out there that we thought, wow, they're so self-assured or I wish I was more like that. Well, you, you can be. You are obsessed with you and committed to you enough where you can be that person. You can be that person that's feel, that is so self-assured that you exude that for other people that they want that for themselves too. So self-assured in your own abilities. All right, my friends, happy, happy new year. This is a year. You're going to step into all of this. We're here with you and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks everybody. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the Shop 1 in 5 Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shop one in five.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the small business shopping directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop one in five.com. <laughs>